In just about every protocol book in the US, the recommendation is to maintain a systolic blood pressure above 90 or a MAP, a mean arterial blood pressure, of at least 65. In this video, let's take a closer look at that number, that MAP, and why does it need to be above 65, starting right now. Now, when looking at that recommendation of maintaining a MAP above 65, we have to put this in the context of looking at two other numbers, which is the ICP, the intracranial pressure, and the cerebral perfusion pressure. Now, ICP, intracranial pressure, is the pressure exerted on the brain inside the cranial vault. And a normal ICP is somewhere between 5 and 15 millimeters of mercury. Okay? So we'll put that number over here. That's your ICP. Then we have our CPP, our cerebral perfusion pressure. That's the pressure inside the vessels within the brain that are perfusing the brain, delivering oxygen to the brain. A normal CPP is somewhere between 60 and 80. Now, to calculate a CPP, the formula is mean arterial pressure minus the intracranial pressure equals cerebral perfusion pressure. That's the ticket. We got to keep that number over 60. If I have a mean arterial blood pressure of, say, 65, and I subtract my ICP of, say, they have 10, now my cerebral perfusion pressure is down to 55 and that's going to be too low. How would you know your cerebral perfusion pressure is dropping? Your patient will lose consciousness. You'll have altered mental status. The same as any other time the brain is not adequately perfused, you'll have altered mental status. So when we're looking at that mean of 65, the reason we want it that high is we have to subtract our ICP and still maintain a cerebral perfusion pressure above 60. Now, when you look at these numbers, uh, the references, they vary slightly, but that is the reason why we maintain a MAP over 65 to make sure that we can deduct our ICP and still adequately perfuse the brain. I'm Mark, thanks for watching. See you in the next video. A blood pressure of a mean arterial,